42 years old. Dr. Martin Luther King says he does not intend to cancel plans for an open housing march Sunday in the Chicago suburb of Cicero. Cook County Sheriff Richard Ogilvie asked King to call on the march, and the police in Cicero said they would ask the National Guard to be called out if it is him. King now invited Georgia class to return to Chicago Tuesday. In Chicago, Richard Speck, a U.S. murderer of nine student nurses, was brought before a grand jury to pay for indictment. The nurses were found stabbed and strangled in their Chicago apartment. In Washington, the atmosphere was tense today as a special subcommittee of the House Committee on Automatic Activities continued its probe into anti-Vietnam War protests. Demonstrators were forcibly evicted from the hearings when they began chanting anti-war slogans. Former Vice President Richard Nixon says that unless there is a substantial increase in the present war effort in Vietnam, the U.S. should look forward to five more years of war. In a speech before the Convention on the Veterans of Foreign Wars in New York, Nixon also said opposition to the war in this country is the greatest single weapon working against the U.S. That's the 7 o'clock edition of the news. Good night. Every time, every time I pull out my smartphone and start reading through the news, just get more and more depressed. I, I, I pull up my, my Facebook account and I, I start going through everything that's going on. I read, I read articles and oh, look at this. Uh, I can't believe all the stuff that's happening with the National Football League right now. All the, all the abuse and, and all the scandals to go along with it. <laughs> and, then I, and then I go on something like Facebook and and, and everybody seems to have an opinion about it. Got opinions this way and that way. I, I don't know what to believe. I, it just seems like, like everything's changing. I remember when, when the NFL was a game that people just played for the love of the sport. Now it's all about money. Oh, look at this. I got another friend that's having a baby. They're, they're first born. Oh, that's going to be a life change. Oh, well, here's some others. A, a fifth birthday party. A kid girl going off to college. Oh, wow. Huh. Classmate of mine from high school just died. Wow. People being born, growing up, dying just like that. <laughs> Politics. Oh, man. I, I didn't know my friend believed that. Wow, opinions about these political issues. When did we become such a divided nation in a world in conflict? Some people say it's always been that way, and it's just becoming more and more publicized and dramatized in the media. But I don't know what to believe. <laughs> it just seems like everything is the same. And the thing that's the same is that everything is constantly changing. I, I don't know, I just get so frustrated with What's going on here locally? Daily Mining is I, I always like to start with the comics. Uh, Beetle Bailey, one of the longest running cartoons. Uh, and this one, what's he doing? Uh, Beetle's on his way to try to drop off a letter at the post office box. And in each frame, he's running into somebody different that asks him how he's doing. You're looking good today, Beetle. Thanks, Plato. The next one. How you doing, Beetle? Hanging in there. How are you, Beetle? As good as it gets. Hey, Beetle, how's it going? <laughs> Rolling with the punches. Hey, Beetle, my man, all cool? You can't keep a good man down. Drops his letter in the mailbox. There. Now I can go back to the barracks. And the final frame laying down in his bed. Telling everyone how great I feel totally wears me out. I huh. wonder if he was actually feeling great. And when I read it, I, I feel the opposite way. I, I, I so often put a smile on my face. This, this world, this ever-changing world is just full of toil and trouble. And If people greet me on the street, by no means am I going to bear all of my grievances to them. So I put a smile on my face, and believe it or not, that is exhausting. Huh. 
front page. Top headline, Cattall is still not competent. I don't know if you remember that. 30-year-old broke into an apartment of an elderly woman last year and murdered her. Right here in town, and they don't know if he's competent to stand trial. Right next to that, a woman fatally stabbed in Hubble. A 14-year-old who was stabbed as well had to call 911. On top of that, there's that other murder charge that's in trial, a, a domestic abuse case. When did our community become one where there's three murders in the last year? A web poll here. The Daily Mining Gazette's online edition, we ask the following question. Do you agree with the decision to go to war with ISIS? 75% of the people say yes, 25% say no. Oh, another war in Iraq? Did we even ever leave? It just seems like the same thing. Should we go to war? I don't know. I'm no expert. All of my friends think they're experts in this issue, but I wish that I could just trust my government to make good decisions. I don't even know if I can do that. How am I supposed to know what to do? What else is in there? Hmm. An article by, by Joe Kirkish, huh. a legendary name in the communities, making a comeback to the Mining Gazette writing here. He's going to write a monthly article about growing old gracefully. This one's entitled what it means to be over 60. <laughs> it is tough being over 60. <laughs> or at least sometimes it feels that way. <clears throat> he writes, So you're over 60. In the dark ages, that would have been miraculous. You would have been expected to live to 35 or 40. Leap to the past few decades when people died in their 60s, then 70s, then 80s, then 90s, and now in homes for the aged, living past 100 is no longer considered a rarity. Doctors tell us that providing we followed healthy living habits from birth on, we could very possibly live twice past the 60s. At present, we look past on a, on, a, on a unique life. You survived the Great Depression in hand-me-downs and potatoes and fatty hamburger. Nothing was thrown away. It was a decade of bare necessities. Then you survived World War II with one family car and luxuries flowed into new affluence. You look at the new breed of children growing up in a society in which self became primary, knowing full well that the gradual shift from communal living to egocentric would have its price. And that worried you. In education, you would focus on reading, writing, and arithmetic under rigid tutorship. And then as the globe shrank, we learned of amazing new places, people, customs, and languages. Made in the USA was no longer entirely true as internationally produced goods flooded our markets with cheaply made products sold in huge Walmart stores to become the norm. In politics, you traded statesmen for politicians, seeking permanent security, and greed introduced a new morality that spreads rapidly into all areas well beyond politics. In family relationships, the traditional nuclear family dissolved as both husband and wife worked to expand bankrolls as luxuries became necessities in ever-increasing quantities. You began to sound like a broken record with your when I was a kid, as if you could prove that throwing out the baby with the bathwater <coughs> wasn't good. So, what now, you ask? Do I really want to continue living in this world that's going to hell in the handbasket? The answer, of course, is a sensible tempering of attitude. Embrace the good things of the past 60 plus years those which make your life stronger and better. And if you don't believe in any of the current trends, you can gripe if you like, but look positively to what the future may still hold and wonder what exciting, good, bad, frightening, blissful things are out there to round out the next 60 years in this ever-changing world. Huh. Interesting. He's got a lot of stuff going on. In his last few decades have just been riddled with change. His advice is to embrace it. I guess there's something meaningful in that one. I better get out of my morning devotions before I head off to work here. What am I reading this morning? 
Psalm 90. Psalm 90, verses 9 and 10. For all our days pass away under your wrath. We bring our years to an end like a sigh. The years of our life are 70, or even by reason of strength 80, yet their span is but toil and trouble. They're soon a god, and, and we fly away. And who considers the power of your anger and your wrath according to the fear of you? That's just what he said. The, uh, the years of our life are 70, or even by reason of strength 80. It's, it's true. I mean, not a lot of people make it past 80, and if they do, they've been working hard at it, probably. But I guess in the end, it doesn't really matter whether you are 35, 40, 120, or 5. The, the, the span of life, no matter how long, is full of toil and trouble. I guess it's been like that way for a long time, huh, God? What else am I reading? Romans here? Romans. Chapter 8. Here we know that the whole creation has been groaning together in the pains of childbirth until now. And not only the creation, but we ourselves, who have the first fruits of the Spirit, groan inwardly as we wait eagerly for adoption as sons, the redemption of our bodies. I guess I was groaning a bit, huh, God? How could I not, though? Will you see what's going on in the world? But the whole creation groans. I never really thought about it like that before. The whole cre this is more than just about me, isn't it? The whole creation is groaning, toil and trouble. John 1 1. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was in the beginning with God. All things were made through him. And without him was not anything made that was made. In it was life, and the life was the light of men. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness is not overcome it. Yeah, I know you made all things. You give life. Oh, God, to, to have your light shine into this darkness. I believe it's true that the darkness can't overcome the light of Jesus Christ, but Lord, I see a lot of darkness. Just come on. Shine that light, please. John 3, 16. For God so loved the world, I know this one, that he gave his only Son, that whoever believes in him should not perish but have eternal life. For God did not send his Son into the world to condemn the world, but in order that the world might be saved. I thought this was all about me. <laughs> That's not just about me, huh? You love the world so much that you sent your son into the world that the world could have life. God, I believe this is true, but so often it just seems like you're just sitting on your heavenly throne holding the whole world in your hands. I know that song I sing as a kid is, it is true. You've got the whole world in your hands. But is that it? Is that it? Are you just going to hold the world in your hands? You, you sent your son into the world. I know. That's the last one. Philippians. Philippians 2. Okay. So if there is any encouragement in Christ, any comfort from love, any participation in the Spirit, any affection and sympathy, complete my joy by being of the same mind, having the same love, being in full accord and of one mind. Do nothing from selfish ambition or conceit, but in humility count others more significant than yourselves. Let each of you look not only to his own interest, but also for the interests of others. I don't know, God, it's really taking me out of my comfort zone a little bit. You want to think of others besides myself, huh? I don't know. I, I mean, I understand this is true, but my temptation is always just to think about myself. Yours, I am. Yeah, no. Okay, so you love the whole world, and if you love the whole world, I suppose, what does it say? Humble yourself. In humility, count others. I guess I better take a step down. 
Let each of you look not only to his own interests. All right, Lord, open my eyes to see others. Have this mind among yourselves, which is yours in Christ Jesus, who, though he was in the form of God, did not count equality with God a thing to be grasped. But he emptied himself, taking the form of a servant. Being born in the likeness of men, he found himself in human form. And he humbled himself by becoming obedient to the point of death. Even death on a cross. Therefore, God has highly exalted him and bestowed on him the name that is above every name. So that the name of Jesus, every knee should bow in heaven and on earth and under the earth. And every tongue confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. To the glory of God. 